Hey gang, Big Ed. So I'm going to, this video is about my strategies with the uh, Zoom MS50G. I think if you've been following my channel, you've seen me post videos about it before with some of my presets. I've tweaked those presets, I've refined them even more, so I wanna share them with you, but I also wanna share my strategies with how I use it because the fact that you can get up to six effects per preset per patch is incredibly powerful and impressive, but how do you use that in a live context, meaning so you have these patches, how do you switch between patches? How do you deal with the fact that it's always on? And, um, you know, go back and forth and not have skips and jumps. And one of those, uh, and one of the important things that anybody who, you know, so forgive me if you know this already, then anybody who deals with the MS50G knows you put the line select first in every patch. So yes, that takes up a slot, but by putting the line select first, you don't get weird volume jumps or blips or anything when you go from patch to patch. But still, essentially, you'd have to reach down and change it, which, you know, some people are okay doing. If you're using it on a desktop, that's not an issue, right? I guess. But because I'm playing guitar, either lap steel or regular electric or acoustic guitar, it's a bummer. I wanted to figure out a way to switch. So as you will see, there are ways to do this, very effective and cool ways. Uh, one of which is the Disaster Area Designs um, Micro, DMC Micro switcher has a USB output and they have a ghost USB cable that uh, can connect to the MS50G and change presets. Yes, that's right. You merely have to set the DMC micro to host in device A, USB, boom, it will switch presets. Um, Sometimes you have to put the left switch to device A, but you have to do that anyway to go to from device A, B, C, if they're three different devices or A, B, C, D. Um, so host USB device A, it will switch on the Zoom. The other thing you'll see me employing is the one control mesquite blender it gives you trails, it has a buffer, and it's a send and return switcher, a mini one. So it doesn't take up much pedal board real estate and you can leave the MS50G out, switch presets, bring it back in. It's also got a wet dry control, fantastic. So without further ado, let's take a look at that, okay? Okay, so if you'll forgive my funky beach towel base so that nothing slides off this music stand. There's your DMC micro. And look at that. It's switching presets. Let's tilt it a little bit if we may. So there's the setup. You got your DMC micro. I've got a ditto looper that's running a lame loop just for this uh, experiment. There's your one control switcher. You can flip the phase, you can turn trails on, and there's a buffer switch on the side. Send and return, wet, dry. Most of us uh, use, uh, you know, we develop the uh, wet, dry pretty well in the MS50G, so there's really not a lot of need for that, but you know, if you've got a patch that you're already set and you don't want to change it and you feel like it's a little too wet, you can bring the wet down. It's pretty cool. Um, so let's go through some of these presets going back to number one. 
Yeah, so um, I'm just going to run this lame uh, loop and we'll listen to some of the sounds. The first one is my phase delay. It's, um, let's see what we've got here. We've got line select, power EQ. I'm just adding a little bit of low and a little bit at 600, 620. The slicer, which is not on in the patch, but can be added if I need to. Uh, I can reach down, scroll to it, turn it on. So the slicer is not on. The um, Corona Tri Chorus. I wanted a little nice little chorus. The comb filter. And then the phase delay. So let's listen to that. Let's put the lame loop on and put this uh, pedal in using the one control. hear the tail of that. Uh, next patch is a pitch shifting. It's um, so I've got, and these are all patches I featured before, but I've tweaked them. So again, line select, power EQ, same settings, um, a low octave, a low fifth, a comb filter for just a little kind of filtering going on, and then a filter delay. And that sounds like this. Bypass it. Right? And as you notice, the DMC Micro is switching the presets now. We're on my reverse granular delay preset. Um, like I said, these were presets I had before, but I've tweaked them recently because some of them were a little over the top for me. Um, well, added with some of my other uh, effects on my board because my board has changed a little. I've tamed some of these down, tweaked them a little bit, fine-tuned some of the frequencies like on the filters and whatnot. Anyway, this is the reverse delay and that one has line select, same power EQ, low and 600 boost. The slicer is in, reverse delay, a uh, filter delay is also in and a trigger hold delay. So this one's kind of my reverse glitchy vibe thing. And you can hear that thing tailing off pretty well. Uh, it's pretty neat. Okay, next one, pitch delay. It's exactly what you think, except again, I tweaked it. Um, this one has the same line select, power EQ, slicer is on, pitch delay, comb filter, and filter delay. I just like the way these all work together. Let's hear it. Bypass. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that one was, has been toned down quite a bit. It's very subtle now, um, again, because of other effects on my board that I'm using that are, you know, they were getting in the way of each other. So next is bit crushing. Um, this is, let's see. Oh, this has got some, yeah. So the line select, power EQ, slicer is on. Uh, the bend chorus, which is really a great little effect, used judiciously, the bit crusher, and then filter delay. So this is my bit crusher. Bypass. cool next is the ice delay this is my approximation and i say an approximation of the chase bliss therme the therme is one of my favorite pedals it's kind of sort of impossible to replicate because the way i use the therme is i use the left switch to change the pitches all the time as i'm playing can't do that with this but you can get pitches um, and delay and a bunch of other effects so Again, we've got the line select, the power EQ, and the, you know, the re you have to be careful about CPU at some point. So I'm using the power EQ on every patch because, you know, I wanted a little low end bump, and I mean a little bump like 1 dB or something, and then a little bit at 600, but you will run out. You know, when you're running six patches, you could run out uh, of CPU. As most particularly with the reverbs on this because they have a very high CPU. So then we have Ben Chorus, the Ice Delay, Comb Filter, and Tape Echo. So this is my Therme approximation, sort of. <laughs> Bypass. Now you take the bend chorus out of that and you'll have a lot more therme, but I already have a therme, so I wanted the bend chorus in that. All right, moving on. This is, um, I call this patch oboe. Um, and what simply this patch is for is um, I'm looking for, uh, this is for when I play ebo, and I want the ebo to sound like an oboe. So line select, power EQ. A little bit of comp. I don't use much comp on my board anymore, but this one, uh, just a little bit of the optical comp helps. Detune, M filter, of course, the filtering. And the reverse delay is last in the chain, but it's not on. Uh, I only have it there in case I want to use it um, in that patch. I can turn that on, and it's kind of a beautiful thing to just reach down, boom, you've got reverse delay. So this is my oboe patch. And understand this is regular guitar. If I'm playing on the neck pickup with an ebo and a slide, it sounds like an oboe. <laughs> So a nice little filter effect with some uh, detuning going on. Again, you play on the neck pickup with a slide and an ebo, and it sounds like an oboe. <laughs> Trust me on that. Next one, uh, this is, I believe, again, uh, line select and power EQ, the MP1 distortion, the seek filter, the uh, vintage 
uh, chorus, and this is sort of my seek filter uh, patch. So let's listen to that. <laughs> That patch has been tweaked quite a, quite a bit because it was a little over the top as I had it before, so I'm really happy with it now. Um, it's nice to have that, just in case you need it. The, the ZP-1, it's just because it needed a little more grit, so that amp modula, uh, um, uh, emulation was just to give it a little more grit. Um, this is another pitch shifting uh, patch. Line select, power EQ, pitch octave down, octave uh, octave fifth low. And then at the end, I add early reflections just because it just kind of gave it a little shape and a little body. The boost, the RC boost is in there just in case I need a boost. If I want to boost that up, boom, you got a boost right there. Again, that's the beauty of the MS-50G. You can have a lower octave. Well, you can have an EQ, a lower octave, a fifth octave down, a boost that you can turn on and off, and then add some early reflections. Uh, the early reflections, again, was just for a little body, little space, little, um, little room um, to open it up a little bit, you know, with all those low octaves. Also, the early reflection, as well as the air and the ambience uh, reverb uh, algorithms don't use as much CPU as the others. So there you go. Let's check it out. Um, and so, yeah, the difference between this one and the other pitch one is there's no filtering going on and there's no filter delay either. So just have two different flavors. Ah, uh, this is one of my two ring mod patches. Let's listen to that. That's just my straight ring mod patch. Uh, this one is pitch ring. Is this one, this one's a little different than the last one, it's got some pitch added. Right, cool. Uh, this is, um, let's see, what is this one? Ah, this is my reverse reverb patch, which I added a lo-fi delay and some ambience at the end of the reverse reverb so it would kind of open up uh, and breathe a little bit more and not be so, you know, gated closed at the end. See, and you had a little tail there. Let's go to the next patch. This is um, <laughs> this is triggered tape. So it's triggered delay, the glitchy triggered delay tape, and bit crushing <laughs> all going on at once. <laughs> So 
so there's the trigger hold delay, bit crushing, and there's uh, a little tape delay added in for some dimension. It's just cool, just a cool idea. Uh, this is the Auto Wah, which I had to add the ZP1 amp emulation thing to just to give it a little extra grit. <laughs> because I wanted a deep, fuller kind of wah sound. Um, drive Echo. The Drive Echo is another one that uses a ton of CPU, so you're only going to be able to put one or two possible effects at, with the Drive Echo. Um, other than the reverb, it eats a lot, but here's uh, the Drive Echo. Dry. Nice gritty kind of delay. This one's like trigger hold delay modulation craziness. So let's just do it. Right, okay. Uh, and then this one again is the octave one. I, that's the other strategy I employ is if there's a, a, a patch that I use often, rather than scrolling down, like hitting the switch 10 times, I might put it every five or six patches. And that's where the switch really helps, but you can help yourself by the more popular ones you use is, is, is smattering them in there so you don't have to do so much, uh, you know, flipping around with your foot. Um, so let's skip over that one. You've already heard that one. So anyway, those are the basic ones that I think I displayed last time and I've changed. Again, this is a game changer to me. Um, the DMC Micro, very affordable, very small. You could use it on or off your board. I'm sure you could fit it somewhere. And then this sucker, um, to be able to bypass the MS50G when you want. So you can bypass while switching. You can bypass to have it out of the chain and bring it in and out with a specific patch or you can use it as a blender. Um, it's also a buffer. You can change the phase. It's a beautiful thing. Not too expensive, like a hundred bucks. I'm not, can't remember how much this was, but it wasn't too expensive, like a hundred, 130, something like that. So, you know, you're getting an awful lot with the MS50G for under a hundred bucks used, um, especially with the new firmware and just let your imagination run wild. But if you add this disaster area DMC Micro and the One Control Mesquite Blender Trail, I think you're adding a lot more functionality. So I hope this was useful and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.